27 of September, it was truly understanding that uh, three months before uh, the Aliyev uh, announced that he don't see any more the political resolution of the conflict and he will attack Armenia. So it, it was openly announced and all of us will understand that it will, it will be like so, sooner or less. So for us, it was not such surprise. Surprise was that they, they start hitting the civilian objects. They start hitting on the residential buildings and schools and kindergartens. Did they start hitting civilian infrastructure and journalists right away from the start, from the 27th, or did it? Yep, yep. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's clearly understand that Stepanakert, uh, the, the capital of Artsakh, it's not just a village. They also have the television there. They have the headquarters of the journalists. They have special correspondents who work and live there. So we, uh, many, many of our news agencies have the journalists there. Even international journalists was there because the tension was grown and people, uh, media people understand that something will be blown up soon. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Aliyev firstly shoot at, at the residential buildings in the Stepanakert. And the, the first victim of the war was not soldier. The first victim of the war was the grandmother who was just blowing up on her bed on the third floor of the residential building. Can you imagine that you sleep in your bed and your house and then uh, your bed, your house and the ground is just blowing up uh, just because you are Armenian or Italian or just because of your nation, because of your color of your skin or, or et cetera. It's just blowing up and you lose your house, you lose your dreams, you lose your life, you lose your relatives, you lose everything just because you are not dissimilar to aggression and you are not agree to be uh, killed silently and try to protect your, your life, life of your uh, families. So as you can see, these vehicles are severely damaged by the shelling and the rocket attacks that have been happening all day long. There's black smoke over in the distance. It has been near constant bombardment of the city Stepanakert since the morning. Armo, a store owner in central Stepanakert, says he narrowly avoided a rocket strike that completely destroyed his neighbor's home. Wow. Sometimes on the front line, it's not... Uh, uh, not so heavy uh, shootings than in Stepanakert. Uh, um, two electrical plants in Stepanakert was totally destroyed on the first three days. And Stepanakert lose the electricity, uh, water and gas. And then the uh, guys fix it and now electricity is, and water is back in the Stepanakert. But uh, when the aggressor uh, just strike on the civilian objects, not on the military bases, not on the soldiers, not on the tanks, by the like electricity plants in the city, on the school, on the kindergartens. Um, you start to understand that it's not just a war uh, for a land. Uh, this war is just next step of genocide of your nation. And you understand that the 100 year pass from the first Armenian genocide in 1915, you don't want to give them a chance to repeat it and do the same. We call it fifth generation war. Uh, why? Because the, not only soldiers, as you uh, mentioned, 
involved in this process, not only heavy techniques, tanks, and etc. involved. Also, uh, the all new technologies, uh, all uh, high tech technologies involved here. Also, the media and social media. It's it's could be like strange how social media or media can be involved in the in the in the war. But let me explain. For, for example, our Israeli friends who uh, survived the Holocaust just now support the Turkey and Azerbaijan and test their new uh, UAV uh, uh, UAVs here in Karabakh just on the on the field they get a super uh, chance to test in military situation their production and hit the people <coughs> in their houses uh, for example the our Belarus Belarus and friends uh, check their uh, their polonaises, uh, which never used before in uh, other places, just in during the war. The polonaises is these uh, rocket launching systems, which uh, hit by on the cities by these cassette bombs. Uh, so the our NATO friends, colleague Turkey, check the special uh, laser navigated missiles from F-16s here in Artsakh. So we can say that uh, Artsakh become uh, uh, the testing polygon where these uh, different uh, producers of the weapon test the new technologies. What about media and social media during the conflict? Uh, it's uh, media become the part and also the weapon of the war and uh, our counterpart i mean the turkish azerbaijani uh, aggressors mm -hmm. they use very uh, very common techniques which used before by mr Goebbels on nazi side when you lying many time uh, people start trusting you or if uh, you lied loudly people uh, start trusting you it's Mr. Goebbels, it's not me. Uh, and uh, they tried to uh, flood the informational uh, fields with a lot of information. For example, they post the picture from uh, Aleppo 2016 and present it as the heating on Ganja. They post the pictures from the Africa uh, earth earthquake and present it as the heating on the Ganja. With fake photos of victims, again using children, Azerbaijanis tried to play with the feelings of the international community, but very quickly Google refreshed our memory. The picture was one of the images of the war in Syria. Uh, they use the same uh, actor as journalist, uh, medic and uh, military uh, officer and present him as the victim of the rocket launching from Armenian side. And when we uh, spend time and our resources to deavulate the, the situation and show that it's just a lie, they say that, mm, sorry, it's happened, okay. And in the social media, they use the special trolls armies, which, uh, for example, my Facebook account is blocked for three days because it got like uh, 20,000 reports per 10 minutes from uh, Azerbaijani IPs uh, to blame, blaming me uh, on uh, harassment, which impossible. <laughs> like it's like, I never use the uh, wordings on my official Facebook page. Uh, so uh, in other cases, for example, in Twitter, they, uh, they start to flood uh, on uh, hashtags. If you don't know what it mean, I can explain. For example, when uh, we use the hashtag Armenia, Artsakh, stop Azerbaijani aggression, they enter under this hashtag and use this hashtag to put like uh, pornographic content, uh, violence content, and et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, and bring to Twitter to block these hashtags and make it uh, not easy to find to our international friends to understand what happened here. It's not just a local conflict anymore. Uh, I do want to address our international friends and colleagues. Guys, uh, just now, Armenia became the front line of uh, fight against international terrorism. It's the first time when the Mr. Erdogan 
usually uh, working with the terrorists, collect them all in one place, not just separately as uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Afghanistan, Libya, and Syria. They all in one place and all uh, attack us. And we, uh, sorry, but to mention it, you will be next. So we uh, we still fighting. We do our best. We s support and uh, protect our, our families. But guys, I don't know. Uh, of course, we try. We trust in in our soldier. We trust in our nation. But for example, uh, one weeks before in Russia, there is already uh, attacked in Czech in Chechnya two terrorists who killed three policemen and, and was shot it in uh, four days before in Volgograd. There was the attempt to blow the bridge. So it's dark. Uh, so terrorists near to your borders.